Okay, greetings from Seattle. Um, I promised a follow-up video with everything I've done to my Honda NC750X 2023. So here it is. If you are considering this bike or are curious about upgrades and accessories to it, if you are interested in any of this, stick around and I'll go over all of it. Okay. Um, let's start at the beginning. Yes, that is a sticker on my Madstad front screen. Um, I'm a quirky guy. I don't think I would have bought this motorbike if I wasn't, because it's kind of a quirky motorbike. Um, but that's a Kitsune Japanese Fox Spirit. Reminds me to not take life too seriously. And who knows, maybe it's a protector while I'm on the street. The dangerous streets. <laughs> okay. So I'll just go over what I've done from the front up, or and ground up. Um, got the daytime running lights from Denali. Uh, there is a switch for them so I can do low, off, and uh, high intensity. The high is very bright, um, so I just keep them in low unless it's a very foggy or dusk kind of uh, conditions. Otherwise it might be too bright for other cars. Okay, so I've got the Madstad Pfizer. I think that their screens have been looking much more sleek recently, um, less barn door looking. I reckon this is about as good as you can get for being a 22 inch screen. I am 6 foot 2, I, th I think it's 22 inch, but that was the tallest that they have. That was the one that was recommended on their website. So I can angle it, and right now it's in its highest position and angled that way. It uh, keeps the wind obviously off my chest and also gets the airflow over my helmet. If this was further that way, you would think it would be better, but it actually creates a turbulent pocket of air right behind my helmet, so the fact that you can angle it is very useful. Uh, it also comes with this sat nav or accessory grip bar, which I do use, um, especially if I'm going on a longer road trip. I'll just mount my quad lock. Uh, charger up there so that I can have the map right in front of me but I keep this down here on my handlebars because uh, my Senna doesn't respond to voice commands so I have to be able to touch my phone very rarely but sometimes if I need to change the track um, then it's nice to be able to rest my hand here and have the phone lower okay this is that Denali daytime running light switch that I mentioned. That's just uh, 3M dual locked on there. Low, off, and high. Okay, what else? I talked about the wireless quad lock charger. We got the GV hand guards, hand protectors. Um, and that's GV. I might have pronounced it GV in previous or in my last video, but I after a G in Italian turns the G soft, like buongiorno. So GV handguards. Um, I've had heated grips in the past on two of my previous bikes, and they're good for a certain um, temperature, um, time of year. They can make life very comfortable, but uh, in the colder conditions, it really didn't help get that icy, bitter feeling from my knuckles. Um, so this helps with the wind, which was kind of surprising how effective it is. And now I have heated gloves, which I find are better and really distributes the heat all around my hand. Um, they are wired through the trunk. As most people know, the uh, NC750X has the frunk and you can see I've got two things connected to the battery. The battery is right behind this cover. I've got my Gerbing heated gear lead which is currently plugged into the controller so I can modulate the heat to the gloves. Um, and I can use this, uh, plug that in, and then just attach it to my battery tender. Since it's connected to the battery directly, no problems there. Um, the second thing that I have wired in is my Thunderbox, um, which is a power distribution module, I believe. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute, but it's mostly on my other video. Um, I'll show you what I put in my frunk a little bit later. As you can see, it can close and lock. The wires come out um, perfectly, so 
can operate the gloves while everything is tucked away inside in the front. Okay, what else? I've got the GV crash bars. I like to rest my feet on them. Um, I might try to show that at the end of the video. Uh, let's see, I've got the lowering peg kit. I think it's a 40 millimeter um, decrease in height, but I didn't go straight down. I angled it a little bit. That is the more comfortable position for me. I can still stand up on them just fine. Uh, I put in the center stand, which is great for doing projects, which I've done a few on already. So that's hard to put on yourself. You have to use a ratchet strap. But And I'd never used a ratchet strap before. Those things are peculiarly dangerous. <laughs> Um, but once you get the hang of it, um, they are very useful for projects like that, but I don't like to use them. Okay, what else? Um, I have the Honda OEM rear rack. I just think it looks much better than the other rear racks out there. I don't fault anybody who wants to save some money, though, and go with the Chad or GV. Um, but I think this one just suits the bike. Oops. Okay, take that off. It just looks much better. I feel like it balances the bike, actually. Not too bad for a rear rack. That's the GV top plate adapter so that I can attach the GV top box. Boom, locked in. Okay, uh, let's see, I think that's it for there. So this is the one project which hasn't finished. This is the final one. That's the Denali B6 brake light. Um, I've got it really neatly wire, you know, tucked up through here, goes through there into the wires back there underneath the rear seat, uh, pillion seat, and actually just a little further. But I've tried wiring it up um, and it can't quite get it to work. I got it to the point where it would be a daytime running light at the back, obviously red, but when I would actually hit the brake lever or the brake pedal, it would turn off. Um, so obviously I crossed the wires somehow there. And yeah, that's a, another story, but I'm gonna do that later. Okay, what else? Okay, let's get to some more fun stuff. Um, let's take these gloves off. Okay. This knob is actually a third key. Um, I had one of my Honda keys duplicated, and I cut it with a Dremel, and then um, it's a neat trick I learned from a uh, fellow YouTuber who sent me a link to it uh, to learn how to do it, and the original instructions, um, you know, recommended getting a certain type of uh, an old gold wing replacement knob, um, but I didn't want to go to the trouble. I just went to Home Depot. What I did was I got a black cap like that. That was the best thing I could find. Um, and then this is an old bicycle bar end. Uh, and I cut this off because it has that cool little cross section there. So very stiff. Um, it's hard plastic. And the, the key kind of, whoops, kind of V's out like that, so I cut that off and but placed it um, in there so that when you're torquing it, you know, rotating it, um, it's part of this tough unit which I glued inside the cap. And that is the end product. So it does not work in the ignition because the key doesn't go down far enough. Yep. But it does work in there. Boom. So it's uh, inconspicuous enough that if I forgot it in there, nobody would think, oh, this opens a secret compartment. 
um, but I usually leave it in there when I have my bike in my, my garage. So that sounded so fancy, my garage. It's actually a crappy hole <laughs> in a woodshed, but I digress. Okay, so that's a neat little trick. Um, if I'm leaving it extended periods of time, going to the movie or something, I'll take it out, put it in the front, take the keys with me, then I open it back up, stick it in. So uh, when I'm stopping at a gas station, I don't have to pull the key out of the ignition, put it in there, it's just a hassle. So turn it that way, and that was the rear seat unlocking. Okay, speaking of seat, this is a uh, seat I ordered from France, but according to the shipping, it might have been made in Portugal, but uh, gosh, what's the name of the company? Something like Paris Salonnery, uh, Celery, Paris Celery, Top Celery, Top Celery, I think. Um, beautiful seat, just absolutely fantastic. Let me show you the original. Okay, the stock seat was not great. It was okay. It's it definitely doable. You don't need to spend four or five hundred dollars on a seat like I did, but I am babying this bike. So this seat, the original, he kind of sloped forward a little bit, and because of my height, it felt a little bit low. So I was just wearing this gel, or yeah, putting that gel pad over top, which worked fine didn't look that bad either I just left it on there permanently um, but with this seat that actually feels exactly like the stock seat with the gel pad on it but it looks better and there is a kind of a lower backrest right there which is um, actually surprisingly comfortable there are different options for the seat this is the stitching I chose I decided to leave the NC logo there I think it kind of looks nice and I ordered the long and tall seat. I don't actually know the differences between that and the short, and I didn't research all that much. It just looked good. Tall and long is exactly what I try to do to the seats on every bike I own. Um, so I think it looks great, and it does feel great too. Okay. Let's go over what I keep in my bike, in my bike, not in the top box. Top box is for my helmet and gloves and groceries or something. So and this is my uh, balaclava for when it gets really cold. I've got my rain jacket and my rain pants. Just lightweight, easy to slip over whatever clothes I have. Got a helmet bag, got my tool bag, got just a spare bag if I'm carrying something. Um, I've got my stop and go re wheel uh, tire repair kit, puncture kit, with a uh, yeah tire inflator. Okay, whatever. Um, oh, this was an interesting purchase. Maybe you've seen this before. Uh, didn't work for me. Okay. This is what I keep in here on a daily basis. All my rain gear. Easy. No backpack. The bag. The sp I mean my helmet bag, the spare bag, and my tool bag. Oops, my ear plugs. Okay. Sweet. Tire repair kit. Sweet. This is a chrome lock which I use sometimes to put around my helmet. If I just want to buckle it, lock it there for a quick pit stop security. And uh, the key for that is right there. Okay, so that goes in the front. Let's see what else. Um, yeah, and that's it. And I still got plenty of space to spare. Can actually fit another article of clothing in there. Um, these are the brackets that come off when you attach the Madstad screen because it comes with its own special brackets. 
These are the side grabs, which come off when you put on the OEM rear rack. And this is what I typically do. So I put my helmet in the top box. Got a spare cap in there. Yes, Yamaha. I still love you, Yamaha. And my gloves go back there. And when I want to look more sporty, I just take the top box off, which I will do right now again. Boom. Ah. I don't know. It looks sleek, but also kind of muscular too. Okay, thanks for watching. I made sure I didn't chew gum this time. <laughs>